Hey gang, welcome back to Dude Daddy's Garage. It is a beautiful day in Georgia. I have my garage door up, so you're probably gonna hear some birds in the background. Nothing I can do about that. Gotta enjoy nature when we have it. Now, what I'm working on is the latest video for the Slither Project. This is part 22 in the series. Obviously, there's 21 other videos in this. If you haven't seen them already, please, by all means, go back and check those out. In the last video, I took the upper half of the original firewall and I welded the bottom half of a Dynacorn firewall to it. And today, what I want to do is install the firewall, get the aprons in place, mock things up with the core support, check the fitment of the cowl, and really start buttoning down the whole front section of this car. So let me show you what I'm talking about. As I said, you know, the whole car has been assembled, been sitting on the jig that I made from a boat trailer. Nobody else has done that. I think uh, I've gotten a lot of comments on that. But here is the firewall. Now, as, it, as I said, I welded these two halves together. I did a little more touch up on this, a couple areas that were uh, a little pitted, but I can't get carried away trying to make this absolutely perfect. It will look very good in the car. I'm not concerned about it and we're going to move forward with this part of it. So, on the car itself, I have punched holes in the floor pan all along the perimeter there. I have holes in the floor supports, and I have a little bit of a variable here. I put holes in the edge of the kick panel right there on that front edge because right now there's no holes on this part of the flange for the firewall but I have holes on this part of the flange on the driver's side. The reason for that was I had difficulty separating these panels. If you look closely, that's where the hole was that was holding this firewall to the original part of the original car. So just on the very edge. That's why there's no holes in this part. But on this side, those holes were in the right location. So I opted to just put those holes into the kick panel instead of uh, drilling them back into that firewall. So that way I can just connect it in and weld from the outside. Of course, there will be air boxes also that go on the outside here. And over here I have the apron assemblies. Now this is new uh, frame rails with the original shock towers and rear aprons. This one I had to fix up the upper half or upper section of the passenger side rear apron it was just too rusted away. I did a little repair work on the driver's side as well, but these are all prepped and ready to go. You can see down here I sanded off paint for the contact area of the frame rail to the firewall and the floor supports. So let me start setting stuff in place and let's get ready to weld. <laughs> I have everything that I want clamped in place, clamped in place. What I have done is using this export brace, I have aligned these holes up on top here with the firewall to make sure that everything is positioned left and right. I've also clamped up the cowl and I've put on the core support and just clamped it in place. Not really critical, I'm just trying to get make sure that the measurement left and right is accurate even though everything is on my jig system. So I'm very happy with that. Now I wanna show you something. This is my Mach 1. I've talked about it already. This car is extremely solid and straight. I wanna show you a measurement. Now I know this isn't dead on accurate, but I'm just kinda of giving you an idea. If I go from the inside corner of the frame rail right there, and I come up to the top of this part of the apron, Basically, I'm just a tick under 38 and, well, actually a tick over 38 and three quarters. Okay, 
Now if I come this way and I do the same measurement where they come from the corner and I come up here, it's almost the same thing, a little under 38 and three quarters. Hopefully you can see that. Again, this car, there's no damage, no rust. Everything is where it should be. If I come back to this car, and I know there, there's variables here, we all, we all know that. But if I do the same thing, this is basically 38 and just a tick over three quarters. Come back to this side and same thing measure from that corner and it is 38 oops sorry wrong spot not back here up here 38 and just i mean right at three quarters hopefully i have that held in the right spot so i'm very happy with that i've also done some measuring just as a rough perspective if i go from the firewall underneath there and come out to the front of this and make sure this is where it's supposed to be. So there's 43. Let's go straight here. 43 and about 3 eighths. Maybe just a little under 3 eighths. Come out here. Same thing. 43 and a quarter. Just a little bit of difference, but that is not completely anchored in yet. But still, that is a very, very close measurement. If I were to, I think there's still some play in this because this is just clamped up r r roughly. Um, there's still a little bit of a conflict down here where it's hitting the front edge of the apron or the aprons hitting the shock tower. Maybe you can see that. Hopefully I have the camera angle good enough but it's hitting right here. So that's also hindering it from going back. Now it is so close that all I have to do is grind this down right here, a small amount, and that'll allow this to shift back. And that'll take care of that measurement as well. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with everything and where it's sitting. I've got all the clamps down in the bottom. I have the pan up against the frame rail. Uh, this, I will point out, these weld holes that were here in the original firewall, they're off just a small amount. And I chalked that up to when they built these, they didn't have it quite as tight of a tolerance as what I have. You know, I'm trying to uh, make sure that everything is as close to possible as to where it should have been from the factory. And I feel like I am much closer <laughs> than what they uh, built the car to. Won't be much to take that. Just clamp it up against, weld it in. And uh, other than that, I think I'm good. I may end up putting, just for my sake, putting in my extra brace, my extra strut right there, and just put it in uh, to verify the location again. But everything else is where it should be, so... It's time to do some welding.
Well, <laughs> there's no turning back now. Those are fully welded. Of course, the firewall is welded to the apron. The firewall is also welded to the kick panel and also the upper half of the frame rail there and the lower section of the floor pan. I have not welded the perimeter of the hump yet because we're still looking at enlarging this because we're going to put in a larger transmission. I'd rather not fight with both pieces and maybe that'll help whenever we get to that point. So, everything's looking good. I'm, I'm very happy with all of this. I did put in the additional uh, supports that I had made and I also welded in the belly bar, or not welded in, bolted in the belly bar. So it all lines up and I really can't complain about any of it. This fits flush to the firewall. I still have one weld up here to do on the inside and I need to sit, test fit the cowl of course make sure all that is in place and going to work out. I think what I will probably do is continue on and at least get the cowl in place. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to mess with the front section just yet, the aprons and the, the uh, core support, but I'd like to get the cowl in and make sure that's at least the lower half and make sure that's all looking good. Yep, very happy with that. With the lower cowl panel sitting on the car, here's the areas that I want to punch holes. And I have this clamp down just to make sure it fits nice and tight. Everything's lining up really well. And all these other marks are showing where I'm going to punch some holes. The other thing I want to do is set the upper half of the cowl on top of the lower. Clamp everything in. And then just for fun, I'm going to set the fender on and make sure that it planes out correctly. You know, I'm confident everything is where it's supposed to be, but I want to make sure that we're not having a problem later. If I need to address something, now is the time. So keep that in mind, even when you're at a point like this where you know that cowl is only going to be so high, uh, if there's a problem later on where the fender and the bolt-in cowl don't line up, then you got something else you have to do, and it's better to address it early then later. So I have the upper half of the cowl in place and I also have the filler piece or the trim piece that goes on top of that that gets screwed down to the upper half. I've mounted the original fenders that came with the car and you know I've done test fits with these before and basically I took the there's there's holes already in the cowl up here and I kind of lined this up where those should be. Can't say those are going to be exact. You know, there is variations in all this stuff. But they're very close to where uh, it needs to be at this point. Back here, I did put some screwdrivers underneath the flange. Because when the windshield and everything is in place, this goes underneath the trim. If I remember correctly. So that's that's what that why that isn't discolored. And so you have to allow for that as well. And basically, with the fender in place, and if I angle it, because it's not underneath here, it's not bolted to anything, and part of the fender is missing. So I can only do so much with that. But up here, if I angle this out to where, where it's supposed to fit, and I can adjust that a small amount, that's, that's about as close as you're gonna get, honestly. Um, and this may be a little bit high in the back and that this is you can actually reform this slightly if you need to they're very flimsy but this will conform to the gasket or to the uh, trim piece right there so very happy with that come over here to the other side and this one's just kind of hanging out a little push it up get it in place and same thing you can manip manipulate things a little bit but I'm very happy with all of this. So now I know that I can take this cowl and fully weld it in and be done with it. But before I get to that point, I will do the lower half and then I need to address 
the air boxes that go on the side because once I get the upper in place, I no longer have access. And I'll show you that in just a minute. You know, I had it wrong. I was talking about the air box piece that goes in here and I wouldn't have access. I was thinking of the earlier cars that didn't have this big cavity here. So the cowl, the upper piece, will sit on top of the air box. So basically I do need to get this in place because the upper half welds to it right there. So that'll be part of the process in getting this in there as well. I'll have to grind down these welds on the outside here where I had welded the firewall to the kick panel. Not a big deal. And yeah, that's going to look good. Just so you know, I'm using the Arc Captain MiG 200. I have it on synchronous for the welding style or welding technique. And the setting right there is at 13. I'm also using 30 thousandths wire. And you can see it's doing a very good job of welding this together. Now, if you're interested in one of these welders, I have discount codes listed in the description down below, along with my Amazon links and anything like that. And if you'd uh, consider becoming a patron, I also have a link for Patreon in the description. So check that out. place to store all my clamps <laughs> all right everything for the lower cow is fully welded now I have to do a bunch of grinding get all that smooth down get this smooth down 
and also prep for the air boxes to go in as I would mentioned previously. Holes are lined up in the firewall and the uh, lower cowl and that's a good stopping point. That is a good stopping point for me at this point of the build. All right, that'll be the end of this video. Now, there's still more to do. I need to prep the inside of the lower cowl. I need to put seam sealer around that chimney and prepare everything for the upper half to go on. And that's going to just take some more work, and I'll do that in the next video. I also have to put in the air boxes, as I mentioned previously. And in the future videos, I will be working on the torque boxes. That's always fun. And putting in the frame connectors. So there's still a lot more to do and a lot more to see. And I appreciate all of you for watching. I also want to thank my patrons who continue to support me through their effort of being a patron. That keeps me going. That helps keep me doing these videos because YouTube, they're just not very friendly when it comes to paying the content creators. But it is what it is. I'm going to keep making videos. I may consider putting some of my videos onto Patreon itself. So if you're interested in becoming a patron, there again is a link in the, descri in the description below. And also I have Amazon links and links for any of the tools that I use in my videos. So once again, thank you. And until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya.